What's going on, Creek Nation? It's Coach here with your weekly video announcements. Let's go ahead and delve right into it. I do apologize for the delay. I uh, wanted to make sure that with the long weekend and, and with the JCPS board meeting that there wasn't any major, major developments, and, and there actually were. So I want to make sure that I communicate with those uh, those with you. Uh, the schedule for this week, uh, <clears throat> again, uh, change in the practice time. Last, last week, we were still in pods. This week, since we're all coming together, we start at 6 o'clock uh, Tuesday through Friday of this week for 6 to 8, 8 p.m. Uh, it's possible Friday we might end a little bit early. Uh, we'll let you guys know a little bit ahead of time, but even so, if you can't get there until the 8 o'clock pickup time, then so be it, okay? Next week, we will start, uh, same thing, Monday through Thursday from 6 to 8 o'clock, with Friday being our first game against Ballard, uh, set to kick off at 7.30, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes, okay? But uh, again, something to keep in mind for, for a couple weeks down the road, that, that practice time will, will get earlier and earlier uh, as, as we lose more and more daylight <clears throat> each week, okay? As we creep into fall, we're going to have to start that practice time around 5.30 eventually, all right? All right, uh, <clears throat> some more updates for you. The Saturday scrimmage, uh, for those of you got a lot of questions about this, for those of you guys that aren't already aware from last week's uh, video announcements, uh, the scrimmage is fanless, no fans for the scrimmage. And I know that's going to rub us the wrong way and really upset us. And I'm with you. I, I want you to be able to watch your kids play. If my kids are playing sports, I want to watch them play as well. But we have to think big picture. Uh, and we've got to understand that uh, this first week is not just about uh, practicing for game scenarios, but it's also for us coaches and the administrators and the kids to understand what needs to happen uh, during a game. Uh, in order for us to, to meet those COVID regulations and, and guidelines, okay? So now, now we, we're going to put our 100% attention and focus into the between the white lines, and then next week we can talk about putting people in the stands and, and, and doing that kind of stuff, okay? We need players to arrive no later than 9.30. Has to be by 9.30. Has to be by 9.30. No later than 9.30, okay, on Saturday morning. <clears throat> Any issues need to be communicated now. OK, that way we can get a hold of that. This that we can't be loose about this. It has to be by 930 a.m. Uh, because Miss Nicole has got to do our screenings. And by 930 with 11 o'clock kickoff, she'll have other tasks that she has to do in preparation for the game. OK, so we need them there by 930. We will provide a fruit and snack, okay? not a full blown breakfast. Uh, so we're going to ask the guys to do that on their own. But we will provide uh, fruit and, and a snack, probably something that's that got a little sodium and a little protein in it. Uh, that, that can get them through the game until until uh, probably the one o'clock, uh, one to one thirty time when the, when the, the scrimmage ends. OK, update on practice protocols. Everything we've done so far has been has been great. I think our, our kids are getting used to it. The players can tell you whether they're getting used to it or not. Uh, still reminders about the mask. Please remind your sons that, hey, when practice is over, that doesn't mean that our social distancing and our and our uh, personal protective equipment thing is, is, is over. Uh, we still have to do that. We have told your sons to, to help expedite the process and make it a lot quicker, but they are taking their cloth home every day, okay? They take their girdles and their, their pants and pads home. Their shoulder pads, helmet, and cleats can remain in the locker room. Everything else goes with them. Now, I am supposed to tell you to wash the stuff every day after every practice. That's what I'm supposed to tell you. So here I am telling you, wash, wash your son's stuff every day. You do with that what you want to do with that, okay? I know I don't know how realistic it is that you can wash things every day, but these things do need to be cleaned and sanitized as often as we can, okay? Just to make sure that we're following protocol and so forth and so on, all right? Gators mask and, and water. Another quick reminder about this. Still have a lot of guys with the mask that go around the ears, okay? And that's okay for what we're doing right now. But again, in game, they'll need to have something that they can put, put on and, and, and pop off. Um, so just something to be, to think about because we've told them on the sideline, masks are on in the game. You can you obviously mask are off unless you want to wear it during, during the game. If you, if you can do that, uh, water bottles, guys are still bringing in these 12 ounce disposable water bottles. Um, that's okay. Great. I guess. But, but if we are only drinking 12 ounces of water during a practice, if we're not practicing very hard. So we want to make sure guys have, uh, some kind of thing. OK, whether it's one of those big Hawaiian punch coolers or an old gallon milk jug, uh, something with their name on it that they bring every day. And that's one thing we were going to we're going to start really hounding down on uh, is making sure that water is with them. And that, that, the same thing applies on Saturday. 
All right. Uh, last thing, this is where some of the changes came into place. I told you all last week that the, the stadium capacity for games is 20 percent. That's still the case. 20 percent for Fern Creek is, is anywhere from 600 to 700 people. But they kind of pulled a fast one on us last night at the JCBS Board of Education meeting. Uh, and now they are limiting these this thing pretty much to relatives. OK, um, they're going to tell us that we want, you know, family members only at games. And so here's what's going to happen. Uh, so for every home game, uh, your sons will re receive up to four vouchers. They can get up to four, no more. OK, and if they don't want all four of them, if only granny's coming to the game, they only need to take the one. They take the four, the vouchers, they take them home to you. What you guys do is complete the voucher and then purchase your ticket online at that GoFan.com that I showed you guys last week. OK, so ticket voucher completed, uh, which is pretty much a screening form. All right. Uh, then you purchase the ticket online. Tickets are ten dollars. The season passes are seventy five. The season passes are good for home games only and they are good for uh, lower level games as well. So I don't know if it makes much sense if you're the, the parent of an upperclassman to purchase the $75 pass. But if you're someone who has a freshman or a sophomore, that might be a pretty good deal for you. Uh, we're hoping that they eventually say yes to, to the pass and yes, it will be accepted everywhere. But uh, that's still kind of up in the air. All right. Um, so you've, you've completed your fan voucher, your screener. You've, you've uh, bought the ticket online. You bring your voucher, your ticket and your mask with you. Uh, you will be screened at the gates to the game, just like every other player is going to be screened. Temperature checks, all that kind of stuff, and masks are going to be required. Um, here's what I'll say. We, we, again, you guys are, are, if you're watching this video, you are more than supportive and you are very, very understanding of, of the circumstances. Um, we've got to think about our sons and our sons only. We can't be upset that we're having to wear a mask. I know that that's a that's a very divisive issue these days. And no matter where you stand on wearing a mask or the virus or, or, or should we be back in school or not back in school, no matter where you stand on this, here's what it boils down to. The rules that they're telling us is wear the mask, okay? So that's going to be enforced. And it's not about us. It's not about you. It's about the players. And that's what it has to be for us, okay? Um, so you got any issues with it, feel free to come vent and bend my ear. But at the end of the day, understand it's just not going to change. It's just, it's just how it is, okay? If you're someone that cannot make it to the game, if you're someone that doesn't want to wear a mask during a game, if you're someone that wants to, to yell and cuss me out from the bleachers during a game, okay, uh, then I might suggest that you you just try to do the streaming service, okay? I, I don't know what that looks like just yet, but everything should be installed and ready to roll by, by next week. Uh, they had to put a firewall or something or another in there this week uh, to prevent people from hacking into the system, okay? So <clears throat> be on the lookout for more information for that coming up uh, before next Friday. All right. Last couple of reminders. We've done a phenomenal job on with physicals and we've done a pretty damn good job on player fees. If you still owe, if you your son still owe, make sure that gets in. Now we've got to get that insurance done. Uh, if there was any confusion, I apologize. The player fee, as, as I mentioned in previous videos, the player fee goes towards uh, their gear and their team meals. Uh, the insurance fee is a separate charge that the school charges because that's what the state charges us. Okay? And that goes for that mandatory. Uh, catastrophic insurance. All right. Um, so please start getting that, that insurance in if you haven't already. Lastly, criteria for making that 50 man roster, or the 60 man roster, rather. That criteria is all based on NTI. Okay. And as we progress in near October, this NTI thing is starting to kind of become a little bit more clear. Um, we need guys to make sure they're doing the right things in the classroom. It's the same, same thing as academic eligibility. Now, playing time and who starts and who doesn't, that's still merit based. It's based on are you performing practice? Are you here in a, in a, at practice? Are you giving the full effort? All the things that we've always done, that's what. That's how we determine who plays. Who even dresses is all determined by the academic piece. So there could be a starter that is the best stud ever played football in the life of Fern Creek ever. Uh, but if that person is not, not getting it done in the classroom, that person won't be, uh, won't be on the sideline at all, okay? Because that's what it boils down to. We have to hold our kids accountable and hold, hold them to the fire a little bit to make sure they're doing the right things uh, during NTI, okay? If there's any issues with that, please bring that up with me prior to. Uh, let's not make this be a, an act after the fact kind of thing. Just let, let me know what your issues are ahead of time, and we can certainly discuss, all right? Uh, besides that, guys, I look forward to seeing you guys throughout the week. Hope is greater than fear. I choose hope. Have a great week. Go Tigers.